Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fragrant Bunker. It is summer, and so with summer comes a beautiful selection. Chanel. Top 10 Chanel perfumes for summer. Now, for every time of the year I've done a selection, we started actually with fall last year. So we did our top 10 for fall Chanel fragrances, and then winter, and then spring. Now we conclude uh, the fourfecta. It's not a trifecta, I guess. If it's four, it's the quadrecta, maybe. Oh my God, that's a. <laughs> I mean, you know, we'll go, we'll go. And uh, we're doing the summer top ten Chanel summer perfume. So subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. You can also join me on Patreon. Super Deco all spelled together there for extra perks. Thank you to my patrons who have pledged. This video is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience. Actually, my tier two patrons and tier two members from my main channel get to see this video first. So thank you guys so much in the chats. Hi, guys. So this is an interesting selection because a lot of people don't like the cloying weather. A lot of people don't like perfumes in cloying weather. But then, of course, like I always say, you know, just because it's summer in the northern hemisphere doesn't mean it's summer everywhere. So it's winter in the southern hemisphere. Um, so there's a little bit for everybody here. Technically, it's summer, but it's not so warm for everyone, right? Now, for me, it's really warm. In fact, I'm just, it's so hot in here. I'm having difficulty sleeping at night because I don't really like to leave the air conditioning on. So what happens is I just, I sweat through it. It's like a sauna. And then you wake up puffy and completely all over the place. Like it takes me a lot of time to recenter myself. And what helps me to recenter myself are perfumes. In fact... Which one do we pick out first for recentering myself? Oh, this one. Um, it's also my favorite perfume for the month of June, for my birthday. It, it is my birthday perfume. I don't know why, but it kind of maybe, I don't know, over a decade ago, it's kind of just something clicked, shifted, and it just became a birthday perfume. Queer de Russie by Chanel. I know a lot of people think this is a winter fragrance. To me, this is such a gorgeous summer fragrance. Um, this is the Eau de Toilette concentration that my mom got me for my birthday several years ago. So that also, of course, makes this one really special for me. But truth be told, you could do the Parfum, you can do the Eau de Parfum, or the Discontinued Eau de Toilette. All three go. They're amazing. And since we're filming this video in June, right before my birthday, I'm a June baby, 30th of June. Let's spritz on a little bit of this one. Oh man, uh, just divine. It is the most subtle combination of leather and florals you could get. So back in the day, in the 20s, when Ernest Beau for Chanel released this fragrance, it was targeted towards women, but as we know, perfume knows no gender. Still to this day, I get a lot of people, you know, chatting away or commenting away underneath the videos saying um when i review a perfume oh is this perfume unisex am i allowed to wear it i'm a man women don't really ask if a perfume is unisex it's usually the guys who are scared to like touch a fragrance if it's marketed to women because heaven forbid a dude a bra were to be seen wearing a perfume that's targeted for women no 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 you know let go of that it's 2023 Wear what smells good on you and to you. Wear perfumes for yourself, not for others. Now, this beauty here is a delicate rose. There's a bit of hay, a bit of dirty hay. There is a leather accord in there as well. It is called Russian leather after all. But the leather accord is suede, soft, powdery, silky almost. And we have the bubbly aldehydes in the opening, just like with every Chanel fragrance. It's just... That suede leather accord is what makes this so beautiful for me in summer and also the hay. Uh, it just feels like you're in a barnyard in summer having a good old roll in the hay, honey. Uh, but, but with subtlety, subtlety. This one doesn't cover all your own sweat if you're sharing your sweat with somebody else. This one allows you to blend in all of the smells in one without it being overpowering. It's just divine. Love it. There you go. Queer de Russie. The next one is uh, gorgeous in summer, especially in the early mornings after you've had your roll in the hay and you're walking back home and it is kind of a little bit humid outside, a little bit grayish. Maybe it just rained throughout the night or it was one of those quick summer 
rain showers with a lot of thunderstorm and just like 20 minutes after it's all gone and you have that petrichor smell in the air but you're kind of walking back home in the morning after you guessed it Paris Paris by uh, Chanel obviously is a top 10 Chanel fragrance selection so Paris Paris from the Les Eaux collection in the Eau de Toilette concentration Damask rose, patchouli, and yes, of course, aldehydes. Now, uh, this one is, as of 2023, Jacques, uh, sorry, Olivier Polges, the son of Jacques, Olivier Polges' latest fragrance for Chanel. Now, they will be releasing new perfumes relatively soon, uh, but as of now, the newest Les Eaux fragrance is Paris Paris, super successful, and actually... Of all of the Lezus released, this is the one that has the strongest lasting power on me without using the body lotion that goes with it. So there's this determined bourgeoisie type of freshness, but also the morning after walk of shame aspect to this one, which makes it so typical for summer. Oh, those sleepless nights get you going, and then you get a date, you go to their place, and then you think to yourself, why did I do this? But then you do it anyway, and then when you're done, you're like, okay, well, it was nice, bye. Then you walk back home wearing this in summer, need I say mo. Now, the next one uh, is kind of the opposite of that. The next one is really gorgeous for those airy, dry, summery days in the city where you want to do business and you still got stuff to do, your final things you got to sort out before, you know, the holidays hit or whatever, you know, sometimes depending what job you have, but, you know, a lot of people manage to still, even though nowadays it's considered a luxury, back in the day it wasn't, but to go on a vacation in summer, that used to be the norm. Now, not so much anymore because corporations kind of don't want to let you go any anywhere, anytime. You just got to live and exist for your company. Sadly, it shouldn't be like that. But alas, if you got to battle your way through the working summer heat, this is what I recommend you use. Chanel number 19, the Eau de Toilette, okay, with its gorgeous galbanum and its gorgeous, gorgeous Iris Accord, dryness of this thing. The Eau de Toilette, together with the Extra, were formulated by Henri Robert. The Eau de Parfum was created by Jacques Polge. Now, for summer, I recommend the Eau de Toilette. It is drier than the Eau de Parfum. It's, it's a little bit more... I guess it keeps you more succinct uh, throughout the heat. It just kind of embellishes your vibe of freshly showered, bathed, not cloying, not sticky, while you're strutting your way through the city. This is beautiful. The Eau de Toilette of Chanel number no. 19 is just gorgeous in summer, seriously gorgeous in summer, very underestimated, extremely underestimated, but really gorgeous in summer. The next one is... One of the loves of my life, aren't they all? I love my Chanel perfumes. You know, I veer away and I go places, but then I always come back to Chanel and I always come back to Chanel number 22. This is a beauty in summer. Uh, I coincidentally have this very well-aged gold and ambery turned vanilla in here. This is the Eau de Toilette. And I do prefer the Eau de Toilette in summer, but Having said that, you could do the Eau de Parfum, you could do the Extrait. The Eau de Toilettes have been discontinued, but um, why do I prefer the Eau de Toilette? It has a little bit more incense in it. So when it's very hot outside, the Eau de Toilette version or concentration of number 22, it's just more powdery. It's more dry uh, than the other concentrations, making this really beautiful in the hottest weather you could imagine. We're talking heat, heat in summer, like summer, summer, when you like, you can barely breathe in, your lungs burn from how hot it is outside. That's when this thing is at its peak. And yes, it's an intense fragrance. Yes, it can be somewhat cloying. I mean, this is, of all the Chanel fragrances, like if you're into aldehydes, 
Uh, number 22 is the biggest aldehyde bomb that Chanel has to offer. Seriously, it, it's very old school aldehyde. And um, in fact, it smells of the 20s. This was released in 1922. And the nose behind this one is Ernest Beau. Uh, and of all of the 20s Chanel fragrances that we have, being Cuir de Russie, number five, that are still in production today, Bois des Îles, Gardenia, and... Um, Number 22. Number 22 is the one that most of all, to me, smells of the 20s. I'm not just a vampire that's 237 years old, but you might ask yourself, you weren't alive in the 20s. Was I, though? You don't know. So anyway, uh, why do I think that this smells of the 20s? Not in an old way. Don't get me wrong. It's just a time travel machine. What can I tell you? If ever there were a smell that literally unlocked something inside of you and made you time travel, that would be number 22. It, it just takes you there. How? It's magic. Only Ernest Beau knows how this time machine works, but it works. I tell ya, you smell this and you are somewhere else. Which coincidentally is also really good for very, very hot days when you just can't stand the heat. It's just way too much. You spray this on and it just takes you to another place and everything becomes more bearable. Wear this for yourself, not for others, though, because it could be cloying to others. You gotta love it for yourself. Number 22. Live in Ferret. Now, the, the next one is the freshest, I want to say, of Chanel fragrances. However... And be warned, if you take, if you wear this one in summer, you're going to have to take the bottle with you in your bag. Now, they do several sizes of this perfume, but you're going to have to reapply a lot throughout the day. But it's just that type of perfume. It's that type of perfume that really needs to be reapplied many times a day. That would be Paris Biarritz by Chanel Lezou. Uh, or Les Eaux, Les Eaux, ou, ou, I don't know. Anyway, uh, The Waters of Chanel by Olivier Polge. This is a, a bergamot citrusy, a, a lily of the valley accord. Pure lily of the valley, like a lot of lily of the valley in here, but it is very, very light. This thing lasts uh, just, truth be told, I don't know, 20 minutes on my skin. And a lot of people complain about its longevity. This one is particularly popular in Asia. A lot of Asian Chanel clients adore Paris Biarritz. They love that citrusy note. It reminds a lot of people, I guess, of Europe, of that poetic vision of the fields of grass or also Southern Italy. But um, a lot of people love it, but almost everybody complains that it's just, it's a 10 minute affair, darling. It's a 10 minute affair. So I do recommend layering this one if you want it to last a little bit longer with the body lotion of pa Paris Biarritz. Mm, it's still not going to last you long, long. You know, like comparatively speaking, the longest lasting one is Paris Paris. This one can go on a whole day on my skin. And this is the least lasting of the Lezus. Like uh, Paris Biarritz is like a 10 minute affair, right? But if you layer it, so you don't need to layer the body lotion for Paris Paris because you're still going to smell it the whole day or many hours. But Biarritz, it, it's gone in 10 minutes. If you layer it with the body lotion... You get more longevity out of it, but it's still just not the type of perfume that you uh, spray on in the morning and have it on the whole day and one spritz is enough. It's just not that type of perfume. Now, Coco herself, in an interview back in the 50s for national television, uh, and you could check out that review. I think it's still available on YouTube. She did say that it doesn't matter if a perfume isn't intense. It's fine if a perfume is something super delicate, just a gesture. That's already enough to... Uh, to enjoy your day, to show some character, to show some charisma, to kind of build a framework around you, like for the allure. And so that's why I recommend if you really love Biarritz, get the smaller bottle maybe, you know, and put it in your bag and just reapply several times a day. There's also something really beautiful about the gesture of reapplying perfume throughout the day. I'm a reapplier no matter how intense or weak a perfume is. I love doing it. I just love, I love, I love that vibe. I love having a perfume like my little secret bottle inside my bag. And then while I'm out and about, I just kind of pull it out and I'm just, 
when not, while nobody's looking, it's just my little secret. Ah, oh, live in ferret. So anyway, Paris Biarritz is very refreshing, very soothing, very comforting. It's very much summer, very much summer, but it's just a delicate, refreshing moment. You know, it's, it's, it's a vibe, it's a zhuzh. And you gotta keep reapplying it to relive that freshness, that wave of freshness. It hits you, and then it's gone. And then you gotta reapply. Now, opposite to that, okay? So this was the lightest fragrance that Chanel has to offer, in my humble opinion. And in that list, I would not include uh, from the uh, number one range, the uh, Le Rouge, or what's it called? Uh, Rouge, something Rouge, which I also have, because uh, I think Le Rouge, because that's a body scent. They're not really selling it to you as a perfume perfume. They're selling it as a mist, as a body mist. Yes, it has a fragrance, and yes, it also lasts you two seconds. But still, you know, from the eau de toilette, eau de parfum, and parfum concentrations, the weakest is Biarritz, hands down. Now, the opposite of that, and the next fragrance on my list, which I also adore, and by the way, this one, for me personally, seriously, only really works in summer, even though it is cloying and intense, and uh, it, it just, it takes you over, and it doesn't let you go. Uh, but in summer, it just blo blo blooms. I wanted to say blossoms and blooms at the same time. It blooms. It blooms. It blossoms just perfectly. And we did have some hay in Cuir de, in Cuir de Russi. And we had some roses there as well. Uh, we're going to have some hay in this one. But if you turn Cuir de Russi up like 3,000 notches higher, you get... Le Lion de Chanel. Yes, I know a lot of people are going to tell you, Le Lion de Chanel, but this is like so intense. This is a, uh, a winter fragrance. This is a fragrance for winter. No, not for me, it ain't. I love it all year round. Don't get me wrong. I adore my Le Lion de Chanel. I have backup bottles of this one. That's how much I love it. However, in winter... It doesn't expand. Like in winter, what you spray out of the bottle is what stays on your skin. There's not that much evolution. This is a difficult animal to tame, the lion. It needs heat and a lot of heat for this one to start melting and unfolding all of its facets. So in winter, when it's very cold, your just your body temperature is not really enough to make it bloom the way that it really does in summer. And in summer, this thing, magic. I mean, I don't know what to say. It, it, it's just, you know what? We'll go, we'll go. Let's just spray some on right now. Two sprays is enough. Woo! Okay. And as, oh my God, it is beautiful. Oh, is this thing majestic. Wow. Oh my God, goosebumps. Uh, you know, uh, there's there's like this vanilla, almost like a chocolatey, warm, melting vanilla accord. It's like an ice cream, but it's warm. And it's fuzzy. Mm, my mouth is watering, you guys. It's that good. It's almost gourmand in summer. But you get the florals, at the labdanum. In here, the labdanum. Majestic. And I think the, the labdanum, in order for it to really turn from its solidified state, if you've ever seen how labdanum looks in its compact form, uh, it's kind of like a mushy, sticky, gooey, almost black resin. It's it's, it's kind of like a, a, a burgundy color red. But in summer, in the heat, like right now, as I'm filming, it's super hot. Plus, I got all the spotlights on me. I am melting. And with that heat pops Le Lion, and um, even the labdanum starts flowing. And when labdanum starts flowing, then <laughs> nothing can stop it. And this is the best labdanum in the world. I mean, Chanel knows how to do perfumes. I can tell you this. And add on top of that, the sparkly, bergamotti, aldehydic accords in the opening, and then you got all your florals, and you got that vanilla at the base. I mean, this thing is... 
Oh man, so majestic. There's incense in here as well. Uh, it, but the incense hits you at, in the dry down. Uh, so right when you think that the perfume, and this only happens in the heat of summer, that you get all those layers very clearly popping at you instead of them all just meshing together and being compact in winter. Uh, right when you think that, oh boy, it's hot outside, everything is too much, you know? Is this perfume going to be too much for me? Then it hits the dry down and the incense pops up. And when it, the incense pops up, the dryness pops up. And when the dryness pops up, you feel incredible, you know? You don't feel sticky and cloying at all. This is a perfume to enjoy on your own, however, because it can be very overpowering if you don't know how to dose it right to others around you. Uh, like I said, in my case, two sprays enough. So I actually too much. One was on my chest is actually more than enough. Today I did two because I was feeling frisky. <laughs> but oh my God, how much. I love Le Lion de Chanel in summer. And a lot of people don't dare try Le Lion de Chanel in summer because they think it's too, too strong. Do yourself a favor. Spritz it on in the summer, in the heat, at least once. Give it a go. See how, how you react to it, how you like it in summer. Because don't be scared of it. Uh, this lion loves the heat. Loves that. Lions live in the jungle. Well, not in the jungle. In the desert, mostly. They live in the heat. There's a reason why this thing is a lion. Anyway, I know. Very, very strange to put Le Lion de Chanel in the top 10 summer fragrances for Chanel. But, you know, <laughs> it's Jacob you're talking to here. I have a very, very particular relationship to Chanel perfumes. So I'm going to give you a... A different version of this list than maybe somebody else would. Bear with me. The next one, well, this one, I mean, another masterpiece from the 20s. And, um, but in this particular formulation, only I recommend it in summer for me. And also just saying, try it out. Let me know what you think. That would be Chanel number no. five, Eau de Toilette. Okay. The 20s. Concentration, because Ernest Beau... Oh, by the way, Le Lion de Chanel is Olivier Polge, créateur. Um, Ernest Beau created the Eau de Toilette of Chanel Number no. 5 in the, in the early 20s. Now, this is majestic. Also, a lot of aldehydes in here. The Eau de Toilette was... Um, conceived as the more floral bouquet version of Chanel Number no. 5. While Chanel number no. five extra is an abstract vision of how snow would smell, hence really good in winter, the Eau de Parfum is an 80s concoction by Jacques Polge, a uh, shoulder padded version of Chanel number no. five. Very, very, very heavy on the powdery accord, kind of like a musky powdery accord. So it's more, dare I say, we're not allowed to use that word anymore, but Byzantine ambery powdery accord for the Eau de Parfum, while the Eau de Toilette is all about the flowers and the aldehydes. Majestic in summer. This thing is, it's, it's like a lipstick in summer. Yes, it also has a bit of shoulder pads. It's giving glamour. It's giving sophisticated 20s glamour. It is giving also... A person who knows what... You know what, girl? I'm, I'm all over the place spraying all these... Oh my God. So beautiful. Very cosmetic-y. It almost gives you a lipstick accord going on in there. It kind of... It, feel, it makes you feel like you're very well put together in summer, in the heat of summer. Let's layer it with Le Lyon. Oh, I'm all over the place. This is amazing. Now... Why am I lifting this particular strange bottle? You might say, Jacob, what is this thing? It's such a bizarre bottle. Well, this is the tip that I have for you, uh, especially if you're working in fashion and you love Chanel Number no. 5. Um, so when I was working a lot in um, uh, during fashion weeks, uh, mostly in Paris, and then in fashion week in summer, it's like super hot, I would um, buy this. This is a refill for the... 50 ml refillable metal container okay and um so i would buy this because it has it comes with its own lid it's bigger than the 20 mil you know the 
the ones that you kind of screw open and out because it, it's just a big container. You can scratch up the, the metal. It's really annoying and it doesn't really work very well if you put it in the bag. It's beautiful to see, but you could scratch up the lacquered thing. The refill 50 ml is comes in the glass bottle. It has the printed logo on it. So there's no stickers that can peel. Nothing can damage it. And it comes with its own stopper with a logo, gorgeous sprayer. You don't really need the container to put this in and you save a lot of money because you literally just get this in a gorgeous, beautiful glass bottle. I mean, it's the classic Chanel perfume glass bottle. This, you put it in the container. You don't need the container. You save yourself money, but you put this in your bag and you have a lot of liquid here in a smaller container as opposed to the 20 mil, which like I explained, occupies too much space. So this is what people that are working in the fashion industry and love Chanel number no. five, this is what they wear in their purses because um, it's practical. It doesn't break. Uh, it doesn't break that easily and uh, it costs way less. So it's, it's a no brainer for me. There you go. So that's number five. Uh, sorry, this is, uh, I don't know, what, what number is this? Number seven. And, uh, man, it's magical. Seriously, seriously magical. It just makes me smile every time. And it's also a time-traveling beast <laughs> of a perfume. The next perfume is almost considered a gourmand as well. Now, what happens in summer, especially in Italy, for example, there is such a thing uh, called um, the... Um, the summer pasta. Uh, and it's a it's a cold kind of pasta salad that you could do, usually with fusilli or penne. Depends what sort of pasta you like the most, but it's, it's a cold pasta. It's kind of like a pasta salad. You could also do a cold rice salad in Italy, but I'm focusing on the pasta version of it because you make it with a lot of basil or basil. And uh, the basil in this case would be in uh, Paris Deauville. Now this fragrance is literally the basil heavy <laughs> perfume. It has a decent longevity, decent projection. Uh, I'm on my third bottle by now, I want to say. Uh, that's how much I love it. I have a 50 ml bottle as well for travel. It's always in my beauty case. I just love this perfume so much. It does have its aldehydes in the opening. It does have its citrusy accords in there, but it's that basil, that, that green accord of the basil that gives it almost that gourmand type of vibe. Even though it's not a gourmand fragrance, don't get me wrong. But it just feels like a summery Italian cold pasta salad, which they can be delicious if you know how to make them. Don't get me wrong. You might think, oh, pasta cold? Weird. No, it really works. And so this perfume is beautiful for hot sizzling days like for example if you are on vacation and you are spending some time on, on i don't know patio porch in nature what have you just chilling laying down sizzling under the sun or in the shadow spray this on it gives you that relaxing almost kind of like a balmy relaxing soothing vibe it relaxes you it calms you down uh, like a balsamic type of vibe. It's really, really beautiful in summer. This one goes really well all year round, to be honest with you. Sometimes you can just wear it at home for yourself if you're doing some stuff at home, chores at home, cleaning stuff up, or just sitting, reading a book. Mm. It accompanies you very, very nicely. It's a great companion throughout the day, and especially in the heat. So highly recommend this one uh, for summer. And the next one is uh, a masterpiece of a fragrance. Uh, I mean, they all are, really. And uh, so Paris Deauville was uh, Olivier Polge. The next perfume is Ernest Beau again. He, he is the Chanel master. And uh, of course, in summer, Gardenia is uh, just a masterpiece. I do have the Eau de Parfum here, where whichever concentration you like the most, Extrait, Eau de Toilette, Discontinued, or Eau de Parfum. I adore the Eau de Parfum. Let's just put a little bit. Oh my gosh. And um, I overspray this in summer. I want that gardenia to bloom. I want that poisonous green accord of the gardenia to pop out. Yes, I know you can't really extrapolate 
the essence of a gardenia from a gardenia flower. So perfumers have to work kind of like com putting together other materials and accords to mimic the smell of a gardenia. But Chanel is really good at this because if you overspray, at least in my case, when I do my 30 sprays of this, yes, I, I do 30. <laughs> if I want to reach that green poisonousy gardenia accord. And when I do reach it on my skin, I'm in heaven. And especially in summer, it just keeps popping and blooming on your skin. It's just, it never ends really if you overspray it. Now, these are really expensive perfumes. So overspraying means it's you're going to go through a bottle really quickly. And with the latest price increase that Chanel just had on their perfumes, it's like, mm, almost like, you know what, better not do it. <laughs> like, zone, 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 it. But then if you really want that experience and you want that dreamy state of poison green gardenia, you got to go there. There's no other way to do it. Um, if you want the more delicate version of this, you know, take the extrait and just put on a couple of drops before you go to bed at night. That's also going to lull you to sleep. It's not going to last forever because obviously a couple of droplets are not going to be that intense for you to smell it for hours and hours, but just enough for you to just enough for it to lull you to sleep. It also has a coconutty milky accord in, in it as well, and that is just really, really beautiful. Uh, and in summer, it does keep you clean, a feeling clean, feeling fresh, feeling perky, like a flower that's just been, you know, given all the water it needs to get to kind of like stand up straight and perky, even though there's a lot of sun and heat out there. So it, it does smell like plants. It, it smells the way that I feel when I see in the heat of summer plants that have been freshly watered. So they're kind of just like they all perk up and are super happy. <laughs> That's the vibe this one gives me. It doesn't smell like that, but it feels like that. You see what I mean? And the last, but as they always say, last but not least, uh, this is a masterpiece. Uh, I want to say definitely a masterpiece by Olivier Polge, came very unexpected last year. I did not expect that they would release this perfume, and they just did without fanfare, without any major promotion. It was very hush-hush. All of a sudden, it was in their stores. And that would be Gabriel Parfum. Now, I'm not a big fan of the Eau de Parfum, and I'm not a big fan of the Essence, although it, it is growing on me. But when I smelt the extrait, which is this here, the Parfum, I was blown away. Blown away. And this one, coincidentally, came out end of spring last year. So it, it's celebrating its one-year anniversary. And Chanel really went there. I mean, they released this as a 35 mil Parfum. You know how expensive that is because they're 7.5 ml Parfum of Chanel number no. five is like a hundred, what, forty dollars now. So 35 mil of this, it's gonna cost you over three hundred dollars. It's insanely expensive, but let me tell you something. The white floral accords in here. Mind blowing. The tuberose, okay, the ilang ilang, the jasmine. They just they take you there. <laughs> And and they keep you there. And this thing lasts a whole day on your skin. It's not something weak and bland that is gone after 10 minutes. It sticks to you. <sighs> Am I going to do this for you? Yeah, okay. I did it. How many perfumes did I spray on today? I don't care. Oh, my God. You know what? It somehow has a memory in its core of the best 80s perfumes before any of them were ever reformulated. We're talking intensity of 80s fragrances, powerhouse fragrances that delivered pompous, decadent, luxury, elegance, the shoulder pads. Yes, I, I love to kind of envision, you know, Troop Beverly Hills or, you know, <laughs> the movie or these ladies that are dressed in these white outfits with the shoulder pad, the white turbans, white Cadillacs, you know, the the, the white uh, silk scarf floating behind them as they're driving off towards the sunset. Tequila Sunrise, Michelle Pfeiffer, that vibe. Tequila, the movie Tequila Sunrise. It, it just nails an entire decade 
but in 2023. I don't know how he managed to do it. Like, and I, and I sit, when this was released and I smelled it for the first time, I thought to myself, okay, this is what Olivier wanted Gabriel to be, but couldn't, you know, when they released the Auto Parfum and the Essence, because they're more mass release products, they have to have a certain cost, lower cost, you know? And like, finally, after years and years after those were released, like, finally, we get this thing. And it's like, it's almost like Chanel. This is just what I feel and everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only, not rooted in truths or facts. It's all just my opinion and everything's alleged. But the feeling that I have is like almost as if Chanel told him, OK, fine, you're allowed to release the one you really wanted to release but it's going to be limited. It's going to be in these small quantities, it's super expensive because the quality of this shit is bomb diggity. I mean, it's beyond. It smells like when I smelled this, I thought, oh, OK, now I see what he wanted Gabriel to be all along. Masterpiece. And in summer, these flowers in here, the white floral accords, like you, you see them as you're smelling this perfume, they crystallize in front of you. Like you visualize them like sculptural perfection. It's like Leonardo da Vinci painted these flowers. And then from that painting, you get to smell them. I mean, it's, it's just, and it's also synthetic, but just the right amount. It's, it gives us that eighties, it gives us that eighties pop culture vibe. For summer, it's so dreamy, so dreamy. Hands down, you guys. Gabriel Parfum, I highly recommend it. Yes, it's costly. Get it before they reformulate it, or who knows if they discontinue it or not. But so let me tell you the first batch code, right? Of the first batches produced, so that you have an idea, it's 7501. Okay, that's the batch that I have, 7501. Those will be my top 10 Chanel fragrances for summer. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts and your favorites for summer in the comment section down below. And until next time, well, thumb up the video if you liked it. Subscribe and never give up on fragrant love. Bye. Mwah.